Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode four of the Noved Notes podcast. I'm your host, Noved Player, and we talk about different types of creators, creations, communities, and everything VR chat. With me today, I have the Grim Fandango enthusiast, graphic designer, and many, many different events held uh, within VR chat legend, Deathmap. Deathmap, welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, hello, hello. How, Thank how you, you doing? Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, uh, caffeine intoxicated, probably. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, so, you know, for the listeners uh, listening to the podcast, you know, give a, give a little explanation about yourself. What do you do in VR chat? Well, hello, I am Deathmap. I am a graduate in media production. I do lots of graphic design projects. I have done logos for different organizations around VR chat and posters. Uh, some of my logos have been featured on the New Year's World for the last four years. Uh, but as kind of like many artists or graphic designers that work on the entertainment industry or almost any industry i'm kind of like one of the unsung heroes that kind of like gave face to or gave the aesthetic to some events that most people know about but like people don't know about me most of the time yeah yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say, um, yeah, you mentioned the New Year's Eve world. If I remember correctly, the one in the last one, which was the one for this past New Year's, uh, I believe that was mm -hmm. Fra Fractured Thones community, right? Well, technically, yes, but also um, a Project Community is another event that I help with, and it's one that actually got featured not on the world but on the video player mm. yeah no i did see that it was it was definitely a fun video to watch um you know so you, you know you do uh logo design graphic design um you know what it, it, from an artist's standpoint um because you know you you have a background with you know graphic design and stuff um correct me if i'm wrong you you, you have like a you have a whole degree in it correct is that correct yeah yeah you know so this this guy knows his stuff <laughs> plain, plain, plain simply um now and what's funny for mm -hmm. those that are listening uh i actually took uh some amazing help from him when i was working with a few uh communities and working on stuff so i from first experience i can definitely tell you like he has been a huge help <laughs> in regards to you know helping me learn a little bit you know from the professional side of like graphic design um but yeah, so, you know, how many, if, if you have an estimate or if you know the exact number, how many, how many communities have you made stuff for? Like graphics, posters, logos, et cetera. Oh my God. You will believe that's not that many. I have worked like around 12 at most, honestly, because it's kind of like helping them in little bits. They not always, usually the things that I do. They are, how do you say it? It's been done like once, but they can just have, uh, keep reusing the same asset over and over again because it just has like longevity, basically. Mm, mm. You know, I mean, yeah, that's uh, 12, 12 is definitely like a crazy number. Like, I, 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 I mean, I work with like probably eight maybe nine i almost said seven but probably like eight or nine if i had to think of it off the top of my head mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, I'd have to make a list <laughs> i'd have to make a list but um but yeah no mm -hmm. like double digits like that's i mean you definitely got your work cut out for you you know um speaking from experience like i i know like i'm always constantly working you know is it pretty much the same like do you ever get a chance to take a break incredibly i do but this kind of like I, I live on that constant uh feel of breaks are not how they say it kind of like I not always feel that I deserve my breaks. Sometimes it's just kind of like it's either waiting on something or trying to engage on uh, not engage uh trying to arrange something else and just that takes downtime that I have that. Okay, this is waiting period. I just turn that into break period because otherwise breaks I fucking how 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 can I put it? 
breaks I don't have them guaranteed basically. And even when I have breaks, I feel that instead of having a break, I, I have the bad uh custom that oh I'm on a break. I'm gonna work on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say it's definitely uh it's definitely the uh -huh. creator's dilemma, you know. Um and that's something yeah. like I, I struggle with too, you know. Um for those that saw or listened to episode two, I had a bunch of uh issues. Um seems like every episode there's at least one or two issues. None of them none of them's perfect. The first episode was probably the most flawless it ever ran. Um, but it's it's always something, you know, that could be done better, you know, and that's unfortunately at least my creator dilemma, uh, is I'm always trying to push, you know, to make it better. So like I might get a break. But it doesn't feel like I deserve the break because it's like, oh, well, I should try to improve mm -hmm. how I record or how I edit. You know, it's uh, always it's it's yeah. always that dilemma, you know, so I, I, I under I definitely understand that from a creator standpoint. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's let's talk more, you know, let's talk more like individual like communities wise, like what type of communities have you made stuff for? Like you, you gave, we've, we've talked about a few names, but like, just, just for some examples, like what type of community, what type of communities have you worked with? So I have worked with party communities. I have worked with some clubs, uh, small ones, um, that usually started just as friend groups and then eventually started growing. Uh, after that, I have also worked with some avatar creators here and there and on top of those i have worked with some small well small for irl standards big for br standards like organizations basically um so outside of that i will say for example two of my favorite works one how did, one that's my favorite even to this day and it's actually on my on the center of my banner on my twitter uh handle is the vixen logo that was made by for br uh br fo folks who's an old content creator that used to hang out with uh, uh james K and a few others uh one of his friends my dude gideon who uh if you know the lioness operator 29 uh, avatar uh he's the guy that made that he also makes some nice avatar accessories i made him as just a fan request uh, as a fan stuff uh, i made him a logo and then he came by and requested me a logo and that was the bixen logo yeah i have done some stuff for free i i it's it's not it's not a guarantee just saying it's not a guarantee that i'll make a logo for free um but that was kind of like a thing that i did because i was young and also it was I don't know, it was uh, one of the few avatar creators from the West that was starting to do their own stuff. And I was like, hey, that's cool. Here, have this. I was doing it during my practice and he was like, shit, this is cool. Can I use it? And I was like, I mean, go on. I mean, it was my practice, but yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I mean, it, yeah. it definitely, it also helps to, you know, start from uh, start from like free and then kind of move on, you know like commission based yeah. you know just to kind of show off what you can do mm -hmm. um so yeah, yeah. that's to totally totally understandable um you know on on the graphic design side you know maybe some of our listeners are interested mm -hmm. in let's say that side um mm -hmm. <laughs> besides the obvious uh scam like oh you should check out my portfolio like discord scams and twitter scams and all of that what mm -hmm. from an actual graphic design perspective what would be a good way to try to reach out to clientele um it's actually a thing that i even have a little bit of struggle with is put yourself out there uh give advice uh here and there show that you know what you're talking about yeah basically if you know how to do tiktoks or short form content, do short form content about your process, about the techniques that you use. Uh, if you know about, what's this thingy? If you do streaming, stream your process as much as you can, stream all your practices. It's a thing that I actually have a an, an small 
uh, struggle with because I'm kind of like already working on projects that are NDA and stuff like that. So I don't get that chance. But when you're starting, use that chance all the time, every time that you can. I know that people are thinking about ah, content creation, cringe, fair, but also uh, it's a good time to... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> like, bro. It's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a good time to actually put yourself out there when you have no clients. Just put your practices there, show it to your friends, do a job for one of your friends, honestly, or family. It sounds cringe and people will tell you, no, that's not the way. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. It's not going to be, exp it's not going to be like uh big earnings it's not gonna be like super how do you say it super polished or things like that but you will have that uh how do you say it that area of being able to mess up around and just kind of like checking where your mistakes are checking where your strengths are at and yeah i will say start from there and one thing that i will say people always kind of like tell me to don't go to art school which is fair art school is for creating contacts or uh, getting opportunities of meeting like some people actually i haven't started for that later but do learn the academia do learn what's on the books do learn the techniques do learn the theories uh, they not always apply but it's good for learning how to break them and how to apply them um and that's just the deal like as you can do something that has like 10,000 effects and bits and bobs uh you can also learn how to do something simple and clean that works almost every time and i know people okay uh i'm i'm about to derail this into go go for uh, it go for it small rant no, you're um good. when it comes down to the minimalism, which is the thing that I know a lot of people like to hate on and dunk on, and I don't blame them. The the brand guy for the Pepsi lines and the Pepsi waves um, was trash, and I admit that. <laughs> um, freaking, but when it comes down to some minimalist logos, it makes sense when you understand the environment that logo is made for. Uh, I'm not saying that your VTuber logo and your streamer logo doesn't need to have like 16,000 color shading, 3D rendered ray tracing. Like that can work. Technically, that can work for the environment and the public that you're guiding that logo to. Because you gotta, rem ah, that's the, the goal. You gotta remember two things. You gotta do a logo for the environment and for the public, basically. I am the client. Yes, you're the client, but your logo, it's going to be for your public mo uh, like 90% of the time. It has to represent you, but it has to represent you in a way that it goes to your public, basically. Um, so, yeah, I will say in that sense, if you... And actually, that's the thing that I have been saying. Uh, most VTubers start, VTubers, content creators, YouTubers, and so on, they start with a high rendered logo with multiple color shading, shadows, 3D effects, whatever. And they eventually start, when they become big, but when I mean big, I'm not mean like uh, 10,000, uh, 100,000 uh, viewers. I mean, well, not viewers, views on a video. Uh, well, actually, that's big nowadays, honestly. But for freaking when they start becoming industry big and more industry standard, you will see that their stuff starts becoming not so less appealing, but just kind of like they are just retiring some of the extra bits and bobs uh, on the shadows, 3D effects, and so on. They kind of like keep a core icon or a core kind of like vibe uh, on their logo, but you will see that they will go to a more simplistic version of the logo. Not always like freaking just, not like Patreon. Sorry, sorry for, I'm throwing shade right now, I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're okay. <laughs> <Not like> no. <laughs> Patreon. 
because we all know we already saw how the patreon logo went from oh it's a cool circle emblem with a p inside and now it's now it was like a line and a circle and now it's a blob <laughs> yeah no it's definitely it's definitely uh de-escalated yeah. and and that that's not just patreon but yeah, like that, a lot of logos have yeah. gone that route unfortunately yeah yeah, eh, yeah. There are some that I do feel that they keep a style. They keep a good vibe to them. Like, it, it's ca catching that vibe. But there are some that they really want to go to the abstract thingy. And that kind of can lose it. I get it. Because production side, and when it comes down to printing, creating uniforms and things like that, it gets way, way simpler. It gets easier. It gets cheaper to produce uh, down the line on an industry level. But when it comes down to content creators, when it comes down to younger audiences, when it comes down to all, all that other stuff, it can backfire because we've seen it on this new era in which everybody can have an opinion. Uh, so we can see that it ha th there's like benefits and then there is, uh, how do you say, it? Downfalls. diminishing returns sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Downfalls, yeah. Yeah, no, it's. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. yeah. no it, it's kind of goofy how uh some of these really cool logos uh and brands mm -hmm. over the years just kind of deteriorate um i mean you know mm -hmm. the discord logo has been through some changes patreon's been through some changes um yeah. microsoft edge which used to be internet explorer went through changes um <laughs> yeah. so so many i mean you know you could go like yeah. twitter which is now x which is still oh, no, I don't. <laughs> we, we, it, it, it's Twitter.com now known as X. It's not X.com now known uh, previously known as Twitter for me. Um, yeah, no, I get that. Actually, that's one uh, that I was gonna say. The one that I like how it changed it was Logitech, mm. because Logitech back in the day it used to be these two glass shapes that it was like a moon and a sun, but really abstract, uh, made out of glass. It was cool on render on, and on the idea because that was when technology was at the time. But now if you see Logitech and Logitech G, like Logitech uh, changed basically from saying Logitech now to just Logi, to just to save on space and, and, and honestly letters. And I bet that when you're printing and making uniforms, having less letters is just costing your, <laughs> cutting your costs, honestly. But mm. the G on the Logitech uh, thing, back in the day, it used to be more round and more, uh, and kind of like the idea of, of high tech on that era. And now it's just clean, uh, clean cut, semicircle and, and a, how do you say it, and a corner, basically. And I do feel that's pretty slick. Like, I, it went to the minimalism side, and I do feel that they pull it off great. That's a, that's a sample that I will give for a good minimalism take. Because yeah. I already gave the bad one that was Patreon, that nobody has liked the every Patreon new version, but anyways, uh, we still use the service because it's a decent service. And then there is the... Uh, and then we have Logitech as a... I feel like a good... Uh, uh, change of brand but to appeal the audience that they are going for basically mm -hmm. like they are they don't forget their audience which is something important that you gotta pay attention when you're doing your rebranding um when it comes to vtubers that's those rules do not apply half of the time by the way you're saying because i'm trying to study that kind of content creation does not really apply <laughs> right um, no yeah. not say <laughs> yeah but yeah, no, I mean, there's so I, many differences and so many good and bad when it comes to like changing logos and brand styles. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely some good points there. Um, but yeah, you, you did mention yeah. VTubing, uh, you know, so you, you do stream on Twitch. Um, you know, you've been doing it for, mm -hmm. you've been doing it for a little bit now. Um, you know, mm -hmm. what, because I know you also went enough. through, uh, yeah, right, not enough. Yeah, I felt that. Don't don't come at me, chat. Mm -hmm. um, but but, uh, <laughs> but um, you know it's uh, you've been doing it for a while now. You know you originally had the uh, the PNG tuber uh, of you know what most people know you as is you know the skeleton. Um, you know. Oh yeah. And you just recently changed into uh, your VR chat model. Um, you know what? 
what was the, I guess, inspiration behind the change? Uh, so this is going to be a harsh one. So hold on your butt. So um, <laughs> there's two reasons. First of all, I wanted to challenge myself into learning how to adapt a model into b and to be able to learn a little bit more of Unity. Uh, Unity, please do not change your policies. Uh, fucking... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to. I no, had no, to. no, no, no. It's all good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I wanted to test a little bit more of Unity. Uh, checking uh, how much I can push it. And also just to learn a little bit more about avatars and stuff like that. Because I have been on VR for five years. And I really only have done like minimal avatar stuff here and there and it's still kind of minimal um when it comes down to that i had i did the change for two reasons first of all and this is i'm gonna get cancelled amigo <laughs> uh, this is this is the this is the the real severe truth on that it was that I have been a PNG model for so long. I have been always scared of just making my PNG into a live 2D because my CPU is not the strongest. I run like a Ryzen 5 uh, 3600. Um, every time that I pull out VTube Studio and I put the cat, the default cat that comes with the program, my CPU just spiked. And I was like, well, maybe if I do it 3D, it's gonna still have a pull on my system, but maybe it ca I can deviate it a little bit more to my graphics card. And I just needed a model to do that. And I was like, well, why I don't use my VR chat model? And then what happened afterwards, it was that one of my friends, uh, started VTubing. Like one of my colleagues from the past started VTubing. And he purchased a model from a website called uh, ST, in which you can get multiple graphical assets made by real people. Well, no, actually, quote on that, there's been some people that have been starting to post AI stuff. Do not buy AI stuff, please, God, dear Lord. Buy stuff from real artists. Mm -hmm. Um... So he had this uh, tiny ma mouse angel model, and I was like, "But he's he's a big bulky dude, IRL." But he was this tiny like angel mouse model, and he was doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Dear Lord, what?" He was doing better than me, and I was like, am I not entertaining? The answer is yes, I'm not entertaining. But the, uh, like the main thing that happened there was that, okay, but he's getting like double the viewers than I, and I have been doing like streaming on and off like for three years. Is it my consistency? Is it the VTuber? And is it, how do you say it, just that I don't have many expressions on my model? The answer is uh, all of the above, honestly. It's all of the above. It's uh, like my, the hindrance was uh, the model is not that expressive. I'm probably not as entertaining when I'm speaking and all that. And then on top of that, uh, what's this other? And it was also the part of consistency. So I tried to get consistency. I tried to get a model that's more expressive. And I tried to, well, fix everything. And it curiously, it went better than expected. Like, way better than <laughs> expected. The ball attract people. I tried to be more, while well, people were there, I tried to be more active. And also, I tried to, even if I don't stream, like, consistently throughout the week, I try to stream at the same exact hour. And yeah, that's kind of like, that was the main deal. And I did that and I've been starting to do good in comparison when I was the skeleton guy. Do I would love to go back to the skeleton? Yes. Do I have the funds to get a 3D modeler to do a 3D skeleton VTuber? No. <laughs> so right now I'm using the cat girl just to ride away for now until I can get funds and make my... 
OC. I'm seriously thinking of making a female skeleton OC that combines parts of my skeleton and this eventually. Um, but that's the deal. Like it was just I need I need I need to I need to get engagement. And curiously, people prefer me like this over the skeleton in multiple places, both on VR chat and on Twitch. And I was like. <sighs> I I hate the numbers game. I hate the numbers game. But by all logistics, I should stick with the cat girl. I don't want to be a cat girl. But anyways, I guess I will. Uh, fuck. Sorry for your bump. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, I'm you're good. Need you no, to believe that. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. We we as long as you don't say you know slurs, they're not gonna get bleeped. So you you're good. You're good. Um. Yeah. You know, okay. but, uh, yeah, no, and that, that goes for a lot of, like, creators, you know, they'll find something that hits, you know, um, like, for example, yeah. on episode two, uh, we had Zaya VR, who's well known for, like, the Pokemon mm -hmm. shorts content, uh, stream VTubing as, a mm -hmm. uh, Florigato from Pokemon, um, and originally, like, it was just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he stated in the episode he didn't really have, you know, really good time with like ideas and stuff so he just kind of rolled with it and then the numbers just popped off you know and it's yeah. def definitely in that scenario you know unfortunately vr chat and twitch people are uh very of the same breed to say the to say the least um <laughs> um if you know you know that, that's all i'm gonna that's all i'm gonna dwindle on that point um yeah a lot of them would rather prefer a cat girl over a skeleton un unfortunately um <laughs> as i mean as you know from firsthand <laughs> uh... <laughs> but you know um I, i've been seeing a lot of your shorts come up on tiktok and i mean you're you're doing a lot better um in that regard you know ever since the change you know <laughs> the 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 thousand dollars uh... <laughs> I hate the game, not the player, I guess. <laughs> uh, kind of situation. And I do... Uh, God damn. It's, it's like that thing. Like You hate the game, but also you cannot stop playing it. It's like League of Legends. Mm. I don't play League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. League of Legends is a whole nother... As somebody who used to play League of Legends... <laughs> um, yeah, I can confirm that uh it's a game that you, it's a game that you just you play it and you hate on it, but you still keep playing it. No, it it's it's like Call of Duty or Battlefield, yeah. you know, there's there's always going to be games like that, you know. Um yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it's definitely, you know, definitely a whole different type of concept in yeah. that regard. Hello ladies and gentlemen, just want to pause the episode real quick. Want first of all, want to thank you so much for listening, watching whatever platform you may be watching this on. Um thank you. It means the world to me. Um I do want to say if you would like to support me and my ventures when it comes to the Nova Notes podcast, um I did create a Ko-fi. Um and a Ko-fi essentially for those that don't know is essentially a way for you to support me um obviously this is not you know warranted but i've been asked if there was you know any way to support me and my ventures so i went ahead and created a ko-fi um so go to ko-fi.com slash novid player and you can feel free to um tip whatever you'd like uh anything from a dollar or to <laughs> very unlikely but you know 20 or more you know, I, w I want to thank each and every one of y'all for supporting me, whether it's just listening to the podcast, you know, so thank you. And maybe I'll start put putting out some uh, exclusive content on the Ko-Fi, uh, depending on how it plans out. But thank you once again. Let's get back to the episode. Mm -hmm. You know, you you've worked with like, uh, so you worked with like communities, you worked with like um, the whole like Twitch side, VTubing, all that stuff. You know, in VR chat specifically, you know, you've also worked with, um, you know, some bigger uh, community based like conventions uh, in VR chat. You know, what what is, you know, what are some of the experiences that you um, personally have dealt with? Confusing. 
That's very it, it's kind of like that deal because um, when it started, so usually, okay, to explain all of this, I got to explain how I started. So I already did my logo for my dude Gideon. I did my logo for uh, Vixen. I have working with another community that it was a party group. That's now debunked. Well, not be debunked. That's a word. I, I, I'm a Spanish speaker, by the way. Um, it's now. It, it basically it already sunset that group. Basically, after that group sunset, um, I was just hanging out with this guy that was talking about one big band that he was like, "Oh yeah, I have my friend. He wants to do a convention because there's not." TwitchCon this year, and I was like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. Yeah, we want to do it on VR, but hear me out. It kind of like, it kind of like, it's missing something. It's missing like a, a, a brand. It's missing like an image. It's missing like a real goal. And on the meantime, you have like, I'm hearing from my site, I cannot really go into uh, too much detail on this, uh, but it's kind of like he was saying, like, I'm listening about these corporations trying to get into the scene and all that stuff, and it feels weird. So, this I want back to create, in like uh, 2020, I, I wanna... just for timeline's sake. This yeah, this is, is kind of like back in 2020. Yeah. yeah, this is back in 2020. He was like, We need to make something to unify everyone and to get everybody working together we can get that what is it we we can get uh that i'm I'm trying i'm trying to find the word in spanish i get it but i don't get it in english oh no yeah to try to get that leg up on the how do you say it on the scene basically because originally this idea apparently it was more like supplant that need that people had to go to twitchcon and now it was like all about getting VR together. And I was like, there, like, okay, we need this. I would love to help any way I can because, hey, I'm a brand artist. I know how to build brands. I know how to uh, create stuff that's modular, that most people can work and just toss into projects so you can have Photoshop documents that just work really fast and really well um and you can have like adobe illustrator in design so on so forward back in the day i did a little bit of after effects so i was like i could even try to come up with ideas for after effects projects so you can have animations and stuff like that and that eventually um evolved into something that people enjoyed uh that was basically this virtual convention that people broke their communities and showcased their how they say it what they do and people gave conferences and things like that and i was like oh, okay this is absolutely cool i gotta say that doing all that work um it was exhausting because this was something that i only did like a few times before um once i did that project for basically like the equivalent of twenty-five thousand, like that amount of work that i did for that it was the equivalent of twenty-five thousand pesos on my previous job pesos is uh you how do you say it Pe pesos is me mxn uh mexican pesos uh, and back in the day that was like 21 per usd so in mexico that's relatively cheap in the us doing the amount of work that i did it's actually triple or four times like that amount in mexican pesos uh but it was basically a huge load of work and usually most of those times back in my real job IRL I had like a few extra people to help me and things went really smooth because I work with professionals and how do you say it and people that are aware of the how do you say it of the 
corporate environment or the basically the marketing and all that stuff so it was like a bunch of professionals working together and when it came down to doing it on br um br it's how do you say it i will say as a corporate background is the one blessing that every person that's trying to make a startup will have compared to people IRL or people that try to actually go and do this IRL. And that's that people don't know. And that's the strength. People don't know. Like if you ask somebody that has made five startups, five successful startups, they will tell you this idea is stupid. It's going to go nowhere. But in BR, we don't know that. And that gives, us a, 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 that gives you a high stand in comparison because you don't know it. So you're going to try it. You might fail or you might succeed, but you are not going to be scared of because you want to try it. And that's the one thing that was the best part and the worst part of trying to do that project. Because um, people, compared to my aerial work, like everybody knew where to go and what to aim for. So working on that was super quick. It took no time. Um, like something that it will have cost like usually, um, what, what do you say, like four months to do? Like, I could have done it in, in two. Um, working on BR, it was like... I needed four months to do something. People expected it on two. And then I had to do it on six. Mm. And I felt destroyed. Like, emotionally, I was destroyed when that happened. But... And there's always kind of like a little bit of good on that. Um, because uh, it, uh, curiously, I was not alone on this. I had like another, another few professional graphic designers that entered the team to help me. And we all struggled. It was kind of weird. We were weirded out. And I saw the portfolios of these people. And they were better than me. Like, no offense. I, I saw them and they were better than me and they struggled too so it was that deal of okay it's not me uh like because that's the thing like me as a it's weird it's i don't know if this is just a me thing or it's just a thing that i was talking before i try to look a lot of issues within i try to point at me as the issue most of the time before i go and point out to somebody or someone else or something else uh, uh, but I pointed at me and I was like, man, I'm not being able to deliver all these graphics in these like two months. Although I know it actually will require me to be four, but it's taking me six. Like I was like, oh shit, it's my fault or something like that. I'm messing up. I'm, a, I'm trash. I'm worthless. Everything that I have worked to this point, it's nothing. Although back in the day I did it for freaking money and now I'm doing it for free for just an ideal that I can like share. Okay. And then that was the thing at the end. Uh, like, no, it was just actually really freaking hard to work on this project, um, on, this, on this convention. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so at the end of the day, I had to teach new people. I had to, uh, sit down and grind out some extra hours of my free time because I had a I, I was employed at the time so I was doing this big thing and I was doing my IRL work at the same time and at that time I pulled it together and it was pretty cool and the best part it was when the convention was going People felt identified with the brand. People felt happy. People uh, wear it, added it to their avatars, made variations of my logo, which 
uh they people made like bright flags and things like that and it was really cool and it felt i i felt that everything that i wore for this was worth it because the people the vr chat community gathered up and grabbed this medallion that i made and made it basically their own and that felt really cool now afterwards um working on those kinds of events it felt how do you say it a little bit exhausting because most of my professional graphic designers uh they went out and i stayed and that just gave me how do you say it kind of like the sole responsibility on this kind of stuff eventually um there was a point in which i just kind of like had to walk out and do my own stuff because at the same time, I was doing uh, emblems for role plays that were paying me uh, like as much as they could. Like I, uh, pro they, it was kind of weird because I didn't f like after all this whole stress and burnout, uh, I felt that my art wasn't worth what it actually is. I had to go to few of my IRL graphic designer friends to tell me that no, it's actually worth more. Um, like these RP communities were actually paying me for my emblems, and I was kind of like lowballing myself when I should be going a little bit more up. And the, even they, like the roleplay communities, were telling me, "Oh no, you should actually ask for more money for what you're doing." And I was like, "Oh, oh yeah, it's just kind of like burnout and stress that kind of like kept accumulating on the back." Eventually, uh. After stepping out and kind of like every now and then getting called back in, so on and so forth for three years, that's when eventually I get asked again, but now by this new other group, um, a group that haha <laughs> you're kind of wearing on your jacket right now, um, and they request me to do it do it all over again and i was like you're insane no hell no and then there was like and then they were like we have division and it was like oh wait division like division that made me go through all of that in the past and then i was like hell yeah uh let me um let me think about it and then i just saw like how they say it their plan and everything that they wanted to do and their systems and all that stuff and i was like okay let me get in um i'm gonna try to schedule some stuff the whole brand i managed the whole brand that i thought that it was gonna take me like six months again to do get it done 80 percent of it got done within the first two weeks and the answer was basically because this new other group of people that want to do virtual events they were like we know what we want to do and that's one of the biggest things for me like when the either the client or the and this is a thing and this is a thing that most graphic designers, especially graphic designers that have been seasoned by events like the things that I go through or just multiple clients and things like that. Just getting a client that knows what they want is what we love. And yeah, basically, they knew what they wanted. Um, and I just pushed through it, basically. And it got done quite quick. And I was like, it feels better because there's some guidance, there's some ideas. Uh, I can work with this. I'm not going to say that there's no struggles within every group that I have worked with. There's always some level of struggles. Even the people that pay me, uh, sometimes uh, we get into a struggle or they do have not there was one part of their vision of what they want that has not been fully, how do you say it, uh, communicated or written down. You got to write down a lot when you work on this area. Mm -hmm. You got to write down every single pointer that you can. 
um just you so you don't lose the, the direction um but the, with this new group it was way easier and things that took me like months and months to do across three years or something like that now it has taken me like four months to a year to redo three years of my work and it's like okay so it's a lot of i will say when it comes down to graphic design and art it's a lot of uh having the proper vision and having the proper goals and having obviously the strategy to go through it uh that's kind of like when it comes down to working with large group and organizations um the second group uh i will say that things have gone a lot faster the only issue that i will feel is that we are going a little bit too fast um because now people believe that we are superhuman or something i'm not superhuman <laughs> um yeah no, i'm just that, a dude i'm just a little dude <laughs> i'm just, just a little, little dude. i'm just a little mexican yeah, i'm just <laughs> a little guy um <laughs> uh, but that's the thing like is, is the deal that um right now like for me because i went from from being pushed to now that now i know what to do going fast now the next struggle is slowing down for me because for me is that part like i have entered into that creative struggle of i don't deserve breaks but the thing is that i'm also going insanely fast so it's it's a that's my struggle right now uh actually it's just i just i just need to take a break and that's where i went kind of like back into vtubing we're going full circle um <laughs> it all right comes together doing VTubing for yeah it, oh yeah it's all coming together um i kind of like i um right now i'm doing that i'm doing vtubing just to having um not a bit not a place to vent because i have family and i have friends and i have uh, a team in which i can kind of like that i know i count on uh which is something that not many people have and that's horrible to hear honestly uh but i do have like all this other stuff that support me right now but kind of like just to have that mental break because obviously not everybody in my family understands all of this or not everybody in my friends groups understands all of this and things like that um, oh trust me i understand i understand like, that <laughs> i yeah. i uh I, I so you know obviously i post on all my social medias um i only use facebook mm -hmm. for like my irl family like friends etc yeah. you know and i and i posted i posted on my facebook i was like hey you know if you're curious what i'm up to i just started a podcast regarding virtual reality and the people that create stuff in it and uh grandma if you're listening to this i love you you're amazing but i'm gonna i'm gonna call you out um <laughs> so you know, she, she, she sees this on my Facebook and she calls me. She's like, Hey, you know, I, I saw you doing a podcast. I'm, I'm not familiar with what it is. You know, what is, what's a podcast and et cetera. So, you know, I explained it to her and podcasts are relatively newer. You know, they, they've been around probably for maybe a decade, if that give or take, yeah. um, you know, so I didn't mind it. And she's like, and she's like, oh, how do I, how do I watch it? And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Um, luckily, my grandfather. Oh no. Luckily, no. Okay, so luckily, <laughs> my grandfather. Uh, I love you both, by the way. Um, luckily, my grandfather. He he's more. He he worked for a electric like plant. Um, you know, and he has more, mm -hmm. you know, um, experience with like computers. He's like fixed computers, like and a bunch of other stuff. So like, I was like, I was like, just tell him to look up or to go to my Facebook page, you know, click the link and it'll pull it up on YouTube. And because they, they do have a smart TV, so they'll pull it up on their, you know, TV rather than, you know, on the computer, which is fine. You know, I told him, I was like, this is the name of the podcast. This is my username. You know, if you want to watch it, go watch it. It's, you know, first episode was like an hour and four minutes long, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll watch it, yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada. But, you know, it's it's one of those like, you know, 
te- yeah. technology difference for generations, you know, two generation difference, but yeah, <laughs> I, I love you guys. Mm-hmm. I want to state that if you're watching this, you can call me and, you know, rip me a new one later. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, you know, mm-hmm. it's definitely a technology gap in that, in that aspect. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's no different than, you know, like you were saying, virtual, you know, conventions versus IRL conventions. They're two different breeds. While mm-hmm. they do the same stuff, you know, yeah. it's, it's, they're both really mm-hmm. good for the community. Yeah, they do have, how do you say it? Curiously, this is going to be weird. I do have worked on an IRL convention, but not as a graphic designer, but as a cook. Oh, interesting. What convention? Yeah. <laughs> So there was two, um, how do you say it? I'm not going to say their names. I don't want to get doxxed. Uh, but there was two IRL conventions, two local conventions in my city uh, that were all about anime and video game tournaments. Uh, from Pumped It Up, uh, Fuck Dan Dance Revolution, that's, that, that stuff is, is irrelevant over here. Pumped It Up, Five Buttons Cross Layout, um that shit was bussin um <laughs> i sucked at it i have like three left foots um, <laughs> um <laughs> when it, <laughs> it took me a second when it comes down to that <laughs> <laughs> um so when it comes down to that um i i before i entered university I worked on a on a small kitchen and little snack bar, and then I also was uh, friends with the maid cafe that was uh, uh, near me. So it was kind of curious because my bar, uh, my snack bar was comic book themed, and their maid cafe is kind of like anime themed, obviously. Uh, so we went. We had like the. Uh, I went with them, and they requested me, Hey, are you working this weekend? And I'm like, No, I'm free. Oh, you can work with us uh, and get free tickets to get into the anime convention center. And I was like, Hell yeah! Um, I'm not a weep. I'm a gamer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop off a roof after saying that word. Um, <laughs> um so when it comes down to uh going there it was really cool because uh although we only had like three mates on on the maid cafe oh wow uh, we had a lot of fun yeah there weren't that many um it's it's a small city too uh but basically what what happened there it was that i basically worked on the kitchen i learn how to do sushi and proper ramen at the same time. Curiously, uh, and this is kind of like a call out to all the people that went to that convention center. We bought like good good brands of noodles the first year uh, because the convention center didn't have like a proper service. So the, uh, the convention organizers had to contract like a group to do the kitchen stuff and they contracted that uh maid cafe so the main thing that happened there it was that um first year we bought actual good noodle brands and all, all that stuff and they were amazing like it was the first time that in that convention center you had actual Japanese noodles. Imported, of course, but actual Japanese noodles done as best as we can. Um, people didn't like them for no real reason. And because everybody was spoiled and everybody was more used to top ramen. So next year we changed to top ramen and we sold out. Mm, of course. Nanny the fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. No, it, it's really cool that you I, know I'm look I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um but yeah, no, it's really cool that you know you've gotten to work with not only virtual conventions and you know IRL conventions. That's that's 
not a lot of people can say that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, you know, you yeah. said you, you you did it as a chef versus you know a graphic designer, but I mean that's still pretty cool regardless. Mm-hmm. You probably got to meet some you know awesome people. Um, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, it's it's funny because uh, we were we were worried about like talking about stuff. Uh, we're actually almost at the end of the episode already. <laughs> um, oh my god. Yeah, so, you know, um, mainly want to touch base, you know, um, you know, with some things maybe we didn't talk about. So, you know, you, you've, you're you currently a director over at um, uh, Project Community, which is an amazing group. You should definitely check them out. Um, you know. Yeah. In, a, in like. Notch, notch, wink, wink. Yeah, right. In like one or two, <laughs> you know, in, in a brief summary, you know, what what would you say, like why would you recommend like checking out project community and you know the stuff that you do well uh when it comes down to project community project community is an online convention slash festival in which we like to basically make a celebration of different parts that create virtual reality um at this point we do like everything from uh, film festivals, we do community festivals in which kind of like we gather like different communities all across uh, BR um, to showcase what their communities are about, doing like small events, showcases, conferences, and uh, obviously we have the booths which each community can man or uh, leave this custom booth that will tell them about what their community are about. And that way we can help other communities, communities that we basically came from, uh, most of us. We want to help uh, all groups uh, all across VR chat to get with us and help them get their voices out there. Um, besides that, we uh, also did a small film festival. We also help other groups like uh, Horror Con VR by Mr. Kupi Pasta, uh, with some cool posters by by a handsome fella with with, with an awesome hat. Um, <laughs> um, outside of that, now yeah, we help uh, we have helped other groups to uh, host their events. And yeah, if you are interested in us, you can join our Discord at. Uh, discord.gg forward slash pgkt and yeah we are kind of like trying to look uh, how to push forward this next year well not this year this year um, it's honestly I uh, personally speaking as one of the directors it's a never how do you say it it's a never ending challenge but it's something that it doesn't matter like what happens. Uh, I'm gonna still pushing forward for it. Um, it's honestly one great group co- that kind of like I started working in there as a volunteer, like, and eventually I grew up as a director. And honestly, I really don't, I don't really see it stopping. And I'm gonna anytime soon. And I'm go- not gonna rest. Uh, uh ever just to see see a great future for them too honestly yeah absolutely no i mean they've they've helped me you know in my ventures when it comes to stuff you know um i got quite a few of the uh guests that i have on are you know affiliated with project community in some way shape or form um so you know they're they're i can confirm they are in fact really helpful when it comes to things like helping other creators out and stuff um so last thing uh i'll mm-hmm. give you i'll give you two more um the sec- the penultimate one being uh if you had to change one thing uh about vr chat as a platform what would it be and why VR chat as a platform what will it be and why um ah, man that's a really hard one <laughs> the thing is that i love the platform almost as it is if there's one thing that I would love to change is, I don't know, um, 
I mean, optimization is pretty good so far. The thing is that I come from a long time ago, so I know how trashy it has been in the past, but most of those kinks have been fixed. Um, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Ah, fuck, dude. That's a hard question, <laughs> dude. We try. Um, yeah. The, the... <sighs> No, no, that one. No, no, that one. No, no, that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanna. Put no, no, that's not a problem right now. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, dude, like, dude, these, those are, those are, those are one of those questions that can cook you up, honestly. Like, I already was cooking, but damn, <laughs> uh, I don't wanna overcook this shit. Um, <laughs> when it comes down to BR, I don't know. Um, we already got player economy, that's pretty dope. We got the group systems, that's pretty dope. Um, uh, mate VRAM usage part, like most important part of the avatar creation. Well, no, that's actually, that's real, but also it's just not on the parameters for the avatar settings. Just kind of like a rehash on avatar optimization. Outside of that, um, freaking, I'm gonna get roasted for this, but avatar intro sounds probably that's the one thing that I wish that didn't exist. Mm. Yeah, I can. Like I know, I know, I, know, I have. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I have a lot of friends that use those, but damn, um, that that that's that's my one thing that every now and then I'm like, oh yeah, I need to remove avatar sounds because I'm on a public instance. But I also okay, here's the other deal. This is a group that has gotten a lot of flack during the past, and I became good friends with a lot of people from that era. Is the avatar creators that do animations like we already see like some really cool uh prefab creators but there's also like back in the day we had like these kind of like cool animations that it was i don't know like a huge fleet of covenant ships and all of the sudden master chief lands uh grabs a jackal and tosses it into the freaking uh co like the massive covenant uh, like ship that's on the sky and then boom and no goes by i know a lot of people that did those kind of animations and they still do really cool animations but as the platform has growing and getting updated and optimized um some of these animations have been broken and uh, it's not so much that broken animations uh like fix them no obviously that's impossible task to do but the, i do have seen that animations have gotten slightly desynchronized every now and get, again and that's as people that like to do those avatars with large animations uh, that's become a little bit discouraging and i know that it's just kings of the machine. It's not gonna be fixed here soon. It's probably not gonna be fixed. Um, but I do say that a lot of people just block people that have these kinds of avatars. Um, and usually it's people that join these people because they want to join a friend of those people like me. Uh, just be tolerant with people's avatars every now and then. Like, obviously, some avatars deserve to be blocked. If you have a weird ghost avatar, block that shit. Uh, you, you know what I'm referring to. Yep. Um, <laughs> Not the first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So just more tolerance yeah, uh, with shit. avatars. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you guys have a little bit of tolerance on avatars. You have the, the, the new avatar parameter system for getting a better performance on your machine, use that. If you don't like avatars that are over 40 megabytes, block those. It's okay, it's a tool. The developers made it for a reason. It's up to you to use it. But if you don't use it, it's on you. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah? I can't shake my head any harder, but yes. No, yeah. I 100% I agree. Yeah. 
Um, so uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we've we've already already gone past time, but that's okay. Um, because I know there's gonna be some edits uh, that'll make it a little bit shorter. Um, like the breaks and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, I will say, yeah. uh, I will give you this time to essentially uh, shamelessly plug anything you'd like. Um, anything that you want in the description, uh, definitely let the, you know, people at home or wherever they're listening to this podcast, you know, let them know, uh, where to find you. Yeah. Well, uh, hi, I, I have been death map. Uh, you can follow me as dmap dmap underscore animations on twitter i used to do animations back in the day no longer uh don't ask me um <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want to support me i do have my ko-fi uh, pa -pa -pa. i'm gonna say ko-fi.com uh forward slash uh death map uh Actually, let me freaking pull, pull it quickly. We'll, we'll, we'll throw it in, we'll, we'll throw it in description. the description. Yeah, it's yeah, we'll it, yeah. Yeah, we'll throw yeah, it in the description. Yeah, it's that map without the underscore. Um, if you want to watch what I do, my adventures or my cringe stuff going live, how I mess up live, I have my Twitch. Twitch.tv. <laughs> Twitch.tv yeah. slash... Uh, is it death underscore yeah, map? Twitch.tv for... Uh, yeah, that underscore map. Uh, and yeah, uh, I have a throne. You can check my throne if you want to. Um, it's it's uh, throne.com uh, forward slash that underscore map, I believe. I don't know. I'll give it, uh, I'll give it to Nobel later. Uh, and yeah, and mainly uh, join PGKT more than me. Like, I really like, yeah, all that support on Ko-Fi, it helps a lot. One dollar is too many tacos, um, but I do really want to emphasize. No, yeah, uh, go join PGKT, support it, uh, say hi, come by, uh, put uh, put on the Discord. I will answer as fast as I can. I have no life right now, so I can do it. Uh, but yeah, and also we are going to launch soon a video for recruitment. So recruitment for PGKT is going to start soon. So if you want to join the team, be welcome. Uh, but yeah, that's about that. Thank you so much for having me here, Novet. Sorry for going over time. God no, damn. you're good. You're good. No, uh, you're good. I hope I didn't overcook. No, no, you're <laughs> good. No, I, I'd, rather have, I'd rather have more... Uh, like time as long as it's used properly so that's that's no issue no but thank you for coming on the podcast yeah um yeah and we'll put all of his links as well as pjkt's links down below and hey if you did join the pjkd uh pjkt discord i can't speak today pjkt discord you should tell them who sent you nova notes podcast episode four um <laughs> wink wink nudge nudge for that but anyway thank you guys so much for uh. watching episode four uh, of the pod, of the Nova Notes podcast, I've been your host, Novid Player, uh, with Death Map, legendary, uh, you know, graphic designer, as well as uh, Grim Fandango enthusiast. Here, I'll switch the camera that way your wave is actually being shown. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next episode. Also, make sure if you don't already, um, we are on YouTube, YouTube Music, and Spotify now. Uh, so if you prefer one or the other, make yeah, make sure to go check out any of the three platforms. But anyways, we'll see you later. Take it easy. Bye bye. Next time we talk about Green Fandango. <laughs>